Governor John Kasich has ordered all flags on public grounds be flown at half staff to honor the victims of that Maryland newsroom shooting. The week long farewell to Senator John McCain has come to an end. Congressman Jim Jordan is fighting back against claims he turned a blind eye to sexual misconduct at OSU. Right now we have our bright camera lighting, but if we turn this off for a second, you could see just how dark it is out here. Look at this. I mean, this thing is massive and the thing that's really knocking it down is no, not the wind, but the ice. We're wrapping up here on ABC 22, but don't you worry, the news continues over on Fox 45 from 7 to 9. Normally I like to say I'm a lover, not a fighter, but today... Hey! I'm a fighter! It's metal. I mean, this is heavy. I can't lift this up. I certainly cannot. Yet the wind just picked it up and blew it across. Not only there. If we come over here, you can see it inside and all around this tree. It all starts with the click of a button. People are going online, seeing these dogs, but it turns out these dogs aren't even for sale. Working lots of overtime may not be worth it in terms of your health, so if my boss is out there, listen up. Come on, you gotta train your son. I mean, he'll probably be much better than I will. Not surprising. And by the way, Mike, you've never made me feel so short in my life. Uh, I'm sorry. Are you just used to I'm, that? I feel just... It's it's a normal part of my day making people feel short. And Nothing I can heels. really do about it. <laughs> I am not. I am wearing normal dress shoes. He actually, yeah, he's actually five foot, just wearing stilts. Let us in, guys. We, we got to get in. It is so cold out here. I think it's in the 20s right now. And when I say we, yeah, that's right. I'm not alone. We have a long line here at Best Buy. Good morning and welcome in. I'm Clancy Burke. Well, we are just minutes away from the kickoff of, you guessed it, the Americana <laughs> Festival. The excitement is in the air, guys. How excited are you? Do you enjoy a healthy breakfast at home or... Are you more likely to grab food from your favorite coffee place or fast food drive through on the way to work? Yeah, I can relate. And that's an incredibly high number, and obviously we're aiming to get that number down. So one of the biggest things for parents out there is to actually get in that car and teach your child how to drive. I mean, you are going to be the first ones in the car with your child. That's why I'm here with Jeff Caldwell from Professional Driving Systems. The rider in question has raised more than $75,000 for Pelotonia in the past decade. All of that money went directly to cancer research, but now there are allegations that he pocketed some of the money he raised. This closure will impact thousands. There's no doubt about it. And obviously, it's going to have a huge impact on the doctors, on the nurses, even the janitorial staff. But more than anything, it's going to have an impact on all of this. This is the community. Rachel dragged us to. Do you want to see the Grand Hill we're at right now? Let me show you. So all we're going to slide down this huge, monstrous Mount Everest-like hill. Whenever I have a group, I always ask, Who's the talker? And they all pointed to this guy right here, Corey. So that's exactly why I'm going to start with Tim. It was so muddy out here. And to show you how muddy it is, you can actually just take a look at my shoes. Imagine this. You show up early for a business meeting, so you decide, you know what? Why not sit outside a Starbucks? You have nothing else to do. You're 10 minutes early. And then the next thing you know, you're in handcuffs. You're being arrested and you're not even told why. That's exactly what happened a month ago on April 12th to two African-American men in Philadelphia. This is where the people have checked in already. 15 of the 16 members already here. I mean, people have been here since around 3, 4 o'clock this morning. Over here is where they're kind of just checking their gear. You're also going to be getting free life-saving information. And you can see behind me, cars are already starting to line up, even though the sun isn't even up. So you might be a little bit concerned, thinking in your mind, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to get any free breakfast, free information? Well, yes, guys, look how many bags are here. Well, Adam, Riverside police have hit a bit of a dead end. This is the parking lot where Cheryl Coker's car was last seen. It drove into a spot back there, and the entire thing was captured by this camera. But right now, police are frustrated by what it didn't capture. I've been here my whole life, 58 years. And I've never heard of anything like this, ever. Joe Rumley works at the surveillance store where Cheryl Coker's car was found. It pulled in 1048 Tuesday morning, three hours after police say she was last seen. The vehicle was locked, but all of her personal belongings uh, remained inside the car. From this parking spot, you can see Clancy's Tavern, and Clancy's Tavern can see you. We were excited. We thought we actually were going to be able to see what, what took place. Hours of surveillance from that day. But the problem is what that video shows and what it doesn't. The car comes in, looks like it's going to park there, and then it changes its mind, and then comes up and pulls into a parking space right there. And then the footage jumps a full minute. The camera was set up to motion record, not constantly record, so you never actually see anyone get out of the car. The car just basically sits there until, I think, Wednesday night at 830 when it was actually towed away by the police. Whether or not Coker was in the car, no one knows. But police say what was in it. Her cell phone, her ID, her credit card, her purse, all those types of items uh, being left 
definitely added to the suspicion. Did somebody kidnap Cheryl Coker? That's what we're afraid of, but no one really knows at this point. Again, it's just very suspicious circumstances. Police have spent hours looking at that footage, trying to see if they could find any clues that would help solve this case, but so far, nothing. However, they're not giving up, and they're going to continue searching. Adam, today was not a good day to have a fair. There was thunder, there was lightning, and as you can see, there wasn't a whole lot of people here. But still, some people did show up, and they came with their umbrellas, with their rain boots, and with a game plan in case severe weather hits. When Bryce Lokai came to the Clark County Fair, he knew what he was in for. I was thinking like a big thunderstorm, kind of. Like rain, lightning, thunder, I was kind of thinking that. But don't you worry, Bryce has a game plan. If I was like a manager here, I'd, and if there's like a severe thunderstorm, possible tornado nearby, I'd probably just keep everybody inside. And Scott Rollins, who's been working 12 years at the fair, says that's exactly what they do. There's some kind of like safety shelter out here at every fair, so they're just kind of direct people there. He works one of the outdoor basketball games, so the weather for him is a big deal. If it's terrible weather, then we don't have an opportunity to make any money because the people's not here. But inside the 30 buildings at the fair, executive director Dean Blair says it's a different story. You could stay in a shelter or covered area for 10 hours and not see it all. One of the big hits this year is the shooting simulator put on by the Clark County Sheriff's Office. We wanted to let, let the public demonstrate what it is like to be in our shoes, how much pressure and stress it comes or becomes um, in the event. The stress, pressure, split second decisions. And that's what law enforcement officers do every day. And dozens of people were able to experience it, including me. Just watching the video, it puts you on edge. You say, how do these guys do it? And so even though it's pouring rain outside, and for some it's even a little scary. I don't want to get struck by lightning. <laughs> the Clark County Fair has you covered. Rain or shine. First came the call to 911. I pulled into the driveway. And next thing I know, I get put in the building. Then came the call to Judy Livingston, who's on the board of trustees at the Good Samaritan Outreach Center. And she is hysterical, screaming that she has just driven into the building. And of course, I ask her, are you hurt? Are you hurt? I don't know because I don't understand what happened. On Friday morning, just before 10, a volunteer showed up at the Good Samaritan Outreach Center when all of a sudden... I just had, I, I don't know what happened to me. She remembers just trying to come into her parking place and after that she doesn't remember for sure what happened other than she was inside the building. Miraculously, she's expected to be just fine. And as for that damage... Buildings can be fixed. Buildings can be fixed, but lives can't. When the car crashed through that wall, it smacked right into the pulpit. It was sitting right there, but you can see this is the pulpit, not even a scratch. And they say it's a God thing. It's truly a God thing. Starting tomorrow morning, Minister Marvin Phillips says the pantry will be opening right back up. You just don't quit because the obstacle gets in your path. That's when you get up and try harder. That's what his sermon will be about on Sunday. Just think positive. Think positive.